Hi again everyone, it's winter here now, but just like the constant that is the change of seasons, so too our research into new ways of synthesizing sounds never ends. The other day I was restocking my bookshelf and I came across this old chestnut from the 50s, Shawm trigonometry series, and it got me thinking about a method of sound synthesis which I haven't really seen explored anywhere and that is the nesting of trigonometric and hyperbolic functions sine, cos, tan, cinch, cosh, tanch and their inverses arc sine, arc cos and so on. I found this quite surprising as nesting can result in quite small expressions which yield complex patterns and in synthesis we're always interested in any technique which can produce uh, sonically rich waveforms through very little work. So I got to experimenting, which has culminated in my new free synth, NHT synth, a term I coined to stand for nested hyperbolic and trigonometric function synthesis. The great thing about it from a user perspective though is that it allows you to enter any expression you like and listen to it and MIDI play it with up to two variables per expression. I found that two variables is plenty for uh, immense sonic flexibility with the NHT technique. So I really look forward to what you come up with and in this video I'll provide an overview of the synthesis technique and of the synth itself. Okay, so how the synth evolved was like this. I'm in Desmos, a great online tool for graphing functions. Till now, all you'd find on the net about trig functions nesting in any way relevant to synthesis waveforms has been a couple of simple examples. The first one of these is if we start with a sine wave, sine of x, and then do arc sine of that, the sine wave transforms to a triangle wave. We then just multiply it by 2 over pi to scale it between minus 1 and 1. Here's a better zoomed out view of a few cycles of our triangle wave. Similarly, if we start with cotangent of x, which is 1 over tan of x, and then do arc tan of that, we get a sawtooth wave, and again we multiply it by 2 over pi, which is about 0.63, to have it swing between minus 1 and 1. Here's our sawtooth zoomed out. But what occurred to me was, what if we start nesting assorted trig and hyperbolic functions a few deep, like this, and then allow scaling control over one or more of them? I'll just set a couple of variable multipliers here and sliders to control their values. Then, if we alter the values, we find the waveform smoothly changes in interesting ways. And when we see waveform behavior like this, we of course want to listen to the result. So here's the app setup to do just that. NHT synth is being played by a virtual MIDI keyboard, and the waveform of the sound playing is displayed by a sound card oscilloscope, so we can verify at runtime the wave shape of the expression shown in the graphing window of NHT synth. All these apps are freely available, and to get the keyboard and scope, just search in the terms I've highlighted here. Right, so let's do in NHT synth what we did in Desmos. First, we create and play a triangle wave. Next, our sawtooth. And now, a multi-nested expression. I don't have to type it out, as I've included it in a drop-down list of preset expressions. Any of these are freely modifiable, of course. Just before we play it, I'll quickly go over the structure of the synth and the settings for this expression. This is the text box where you enter your expression. Basically, the left side of the app is for graphing your expression, and the right side has the settings for playing it. If you have variables a and b in your expression, you can specify their range here. For example, in this case, a goes from a minimum value of 0.2 to a maximum of 15, and b goes from a minimum value of 0.5 to a maximum of 12. Then, you can set the variables to particular values within these ranges with the sliders, 
and observe how the waveform changes accordingly in the graphing window, just like in Desmos. For playing, in the right graphical window, you set how the values of your variables change over the attack, sustain and release stages of the sound by dragging the points. For example, in this case for variable A, on the vertical axis of the window we have a range from a high of 15 to a low of 0.2, as we said earlier. Based on the position of the points, during attack, A goes from about 5 to 7, during sustain it's a constant of 7-ish, and at release it ramps linearly from there down to around 3. Similarly, for variable B, on the vertical axis of the window we have a range from a high of 15 to a low of about 0.5. During attack, B goes from about 0.8 to 11.5. During sustain, it stays at around 11.5 and at release, it ramps linearly from there down to 1.5. These two sliders determine whether the amplitude of the sound, meaning the volume, changes either exponentially or linearly from no sound to maximum during the attack stage and maximum to no sound during the release stage. The position of these vertical lines set the duration of each of the attack and decay stages, which you can change by freely dragging the lines to the position you want. The resonant low pass filter here has nothing to do with the NHT method of sound creation. I've just included it as an aid for further sculpting your final sound and can be useful for example in some of the more harsh or abrasive sounds as I'll demo at the end of this video. <laughs> And now for some NHT expressions and settings which emulate a range of bread and butter sounds normally created with familiar synthesis techniques like subtractive and FM. Following these, I'll present some expressions and settings for more unique sounds particular to NHT. And here's some sounds characteristic of the NHT method of sound synthesis. Now, instead of using the virtual MIDI keyboard, I'll switch to my trusty hardware Korg Nano Key keyboard to play the synth. Another thing worth mentioning is that I've used a third party component in NHT Synth for reading and evaluating the expressions you enter, called MuParser. And this parser supports a range of functions, operations and constants like these, which give you even more flexibility in the type of expressions you can create, whether they be of the NHT variety or otherwise. Just do a search on MuParser to get the full set of what it supports. Here are some example expressions.
And now here's an example of the effect of the included low pass filter on a sound. <laughs> So the filter is set here, suppresses a range of high frequencies and boosts other frequencies in a resonant peak. <laughs> 